Hi guys, Lou here. Hey, uh, had a lot of requests for uh, video on how I rebuild a Jeep engine. So uh, this is going to be video number one as we put together the heart of Kelly. Um, currently has been cursed. Hopefully we'll be back to being a hero once uh, we uh, give it a heart transplant here. So, this Jeep is actually a CJ2A and has uh, a CJ engine. So, here's the engine block. Um, it's a gear-driven cam engine this engine somebody had painted the interior with glyptal which is a it's kind of a red colored paint that's designed to go on the inside of the cast iron and make a smooth running surface for the oil to return to the pan quickly and uh a lot of guys use them in performance motors and that sort of thing. But one of the things, you never want to paint glyptal on the inside of an engine that um, has been exposed to oil already and hasn't had that oil 100% removed. So all the glyptal paint in this motor was peeling off. And flowing through the bearings and totally just trashing the motor so uh, the moment we saw that we said not nah, we got to tear it down and uh, if you're gonna tear it down you may as well build her so that she'll last so this motor um, I have a friend up uh, in Longmont who has a machine shop uh, peak performance machine. Uh, Eric is a postman by day in hot muscle car, uh, stock car machinist by night, and he does a great job on these old go devils. Um, he understands them pretty well. So uh, I asked him to go through it and fix anything that needed machine. So previously, uh, you know, the last build, the uh, head gasket was sealing just fine. The cylinder head, which is laying over there on the floor, looked fine. Um, there are a few goofy things. Little scar there that's goofy. Um, yeah. Here's a hardened seat that uh, has a, a goofy edge, but nothing that will uh, hurt the performance of the motor, really. So, uh, you know, a lot of Jeeps get the classic crack across here or across here. Um, doesn't seem to have those, so, uh, so we saw no need to deck the head. Decking... Or, I mean, uh, deck in the block. Deck in the block is they machine this surface flat. They only take a couple thousandths off. Uh, hopefully that's all it takes to take out any undulations in it and make it dead flat again. But it wasn't necessary. The top is straight. The head is straight. So it should seal. So the next step is... I think the previous builder got cheap and he just honed the cylinders and put on new rings. Well, in my book, that's just a total waste of time and energy unless you actually come in and measure the cylinders and check for um, roundness. These things oval out because of the the load on the piston sides uh, from the rotation. So they become oval shaped. 
Then you go put brand new round rings into an oval hole. Doesn't work out well. So, uh, um, so we bored them out, bought new pistons, um, valve guides were okay. Cause I think they were probably done up last go around. Um, but he did have a bent valve and he used a bunch of F head valves and F head valve rotators. So we switched over and got all the right stuff there. So anyway, cylinders are bored, cross hatched honed. Um, we have a new cam bearing. And then uh, he checked the alignment on the mains. Um, if these get mixed up from different motors, whatever, you can have this line board down through here and uh, main bearings to fit if necessary. But, uh, okay, so... The next step for this block, uh, my machinist had a little spare time, so he put in uh, new freeze plugs, which we always remove. And uh, I always remove the oil galley plugs all throughout the motor, and uh, so that can all be cleaned. And he put in new ones, but guess what, guys? Those are coming out. I like my machinist, I trust him, he's a good guy, but life's lessons have taught me clean those oil galleys out myself. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all the oil galley plugs, and then I've got this old rifle brush, and uh, it's a beat up old 30 cal brush on there I think I'll no longer run that through my 43 M1 Garand I'll tell you that but uh, I will spray carb cleaner into every oil path and run the brush in and out a whole bunch of times more carb cleaner more brushing and uh, and then I will run my uh, pressure washer through there blast it out with uh, high pressure water and uh, then I'll rub a, run a patch just like you do a rifle cleaning patch I'd run that through and if it comes out clean we're good to go if it's still got dirt we'll repeat until it comes out clean and uh, lather rinse repeat do that until it's absolutely spotless. If you think about it, all your oil galleys um, going through this whole motor, they uh, if there's a little bit of dirt left in them, it's all been loosened up by the process. And the first thing they're going to do is travel to your bearings with the bypass oil filtration on these the filter might not catch that dirt until it's too late and you've already scored all your bearings and wasted all that good money so that'll be step one i'll pull all the oil plugs they're here front and back for the main oil passage and then uh um now maybe i can show you up in here I can't see what I'm looking at here but uh, there's uh, an oil plug uh, where am I looking because I got this thing upside down anyway there's an oil plug over in there for the mains um, so I'll clean all that out and make that absolutely perfect. Something that's often forgotten is here's our freshly machined crankshaft. As you can see, it's a CJ crankshaft with the big bolted on and then welded flyweights. 
and uh, but I will rifle brush all the oil passages I can get to in the crank and uh, clean that out. This thing's been on a uh, machine that has a giant uh, sanding belt to sand all the journals and polish them. And that dust gets in the air and goes down in those little holes. And it's very abrasive. Ruins your bearings. So those get cleaned in the same process. Here's the rods. So the rod ends, he just cleans those up, checks them um, for size and straightness on this one. Sometimes I have them peen the rods. Um... Do the whole gamut of tricks. I don't think it's necessary this time. But, uh, you know, keep in mind, the rods have an oil passage. So wash those out. And it comes up to this little, see if I can show you. Get some light on the subject. See that little oil squirt hole there? It's tiny. Clean that out. If that isn't working, then it's not squirting oil up onto the cylinder wall and uh, lubricating the piston skirt. So uh, you can see these pistons have some scores and stuff from the crap that went through the motor. Um, so clean all those to the nth degree. Alright, so... When it's all done and clean, then we'll switch and start adding. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me back up. Okay. So I've cleaned all the oil passages out. I've pressure washed them. I've swabbed them. My swab comes out clean. Then I put a little oil through everything to keep the oil passages from rusting up. Fortunately, we're in Colorado. I could leave this block sit here on my engine stand for two years and it would look just like this in two years no rust but just to be safe I will oil the cylinders the valve guides in the oil galleys give them a little coat of oil in there um, to preserve things nice as I do the assembly process okay so then I get my parts through my machinist because he can order the new pistons, bearings, all that stuff to match the machining that he's done. So you don't have to wait till the machining's done to get your new pistons. So here's a new piston and uh, 20 over, okay? So, 20 over. As you can see, that one's unwrapped. That's probably because he pulled a 20 over one, took it over to the block, placed it in a bore, and measured the, the play it's supposed to have to make sure he got the bores right. That right there is a sign of a machinist that's doing his due diligence okay so we got new pistons the master rebuild kit even comes with a new camshaft look at that that's pretty and we have a new cam bearing on the the end so that's sweet um comes with a new melling oil pump okay so here's something that I try to talk about. The oil pump drives the distributor, and we've talked about distributor timing. See that fat section versus the thinner section? The fat half moon versus thinner half moon? So we try to get that oriented to about 11 o'clock. That puts the rotor in the distributor hitting number one cylinder at five o'clock and this being 
a gear driven motor for the cam. Your teeth go this way to match with the teeth on the cam. Okay. If it was a chain driven, your teeth will go that way to match with teeth on the cam that go that way. Um, because they, because uh, with the chain going round and round, both uh, the crank and the cam on a chain driven rotate the same way. On a gear driven, the crank goes this way, and so it's driving the cam the other way. So uh, this has to make up for that. Okay, so comes with a new fiber gear, a new steel gear for the uh, end of the crank, new piston rings, um, main bearings, rod bearings we've got new uh spring hats and keepers and brand new springs brand new valves and uh and then of course my favorite gasket set is the felpro and uh I've never had a problem with a Felpro head gasket, so they seem to be pretty good. So, we got all the pieces, parts we need to put the motor together as soon as it's all cleaned up. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, so as soon as I get this thing all cleaned up, blasted out, checked for clean... I blow everything out with uh, compressed air to make sure I get all the water out of it. Don't want to leave any. And then I will uh, fog everything with a little bit of oil. Um, I'll paint the whole thing afterwards, after it's all assembled. Um, I will uh, wipe the whole thing down with uh, a lot of acetone. Rinses off all the oils and greases and stuff and uh, let it dry and then um, just give it a coat of uh, paint so this one's going to get a coat of OD um, for the engine block there's no need to use high temp paint um, they didn't during the war they just used the same paint they painted the body with and frame and stuff so uh, that's fine so it'll all get painted OD, and uh, the average Joe, not like all you smart guys, will be able to look at the block and uh, say, oh yeah, that's a neat old army engine block, cool, <laughs> when it's actually a CJ jobby. That's cool, we'll, uh, we'll camouflage her with uh, OD paint. So... That's the story there. We'll get cracking on those chores, and uh, I'll uh, let you know how the cleaning comes out. Okay, I wanted to show you from the bottom side of the block the uh, oil passages. So this is the oil pump. So you want to clean down in there. There's a galley that goes through and it angles down to the uh, oil pump. Do all the holes in the oil pump, all the passages there. And then uh, there's this one down here that goes in the main oil galley and that's going at an angle back to the oil pump. So you want to scrub there. You have your oil, pa that's the uh, little uh, bearing pin hole, but then you have your oil hole for your main bearing, okay? So you want to get that, then uh, same for the front and the rear, and then you have, you'd normally have that little pipe that hangs down. I don't know where that went. That's interesting, okay. Um, hmm. 
I can't remember if it had it there when we took it apart or not. Interesting. Okay, so you want to clean all those passages up. There's uh, a passage coming out of the uh, um, hole for the uh, camshaft bearing. That little hole uh, right there. Make sure that's clean. And, uh, and then, of course, I'm going to pull the main galley out, pull those plugs, scrub that out. So that'll all get spit shined and then, you know, you get, he's done a really good job of cleaning, but uh, I check and just, I'll clean all this and make sure there's no residual from uh, boring and honing cylinders and uh, line boring mains or whatever he, he's had to do. And when you clean all these passages out, the gunk that comes out of there might end up in the general area. So uh, you want to clean all that. Okay. Okay, getting ready to pull the main caps. So I dimpled them before I sent them to the machine shop, but just to highlight them so I can show you guys. There's my little dimple for the front one in a dimple point in the orientation then the next one two dimples for the middle and then forward and then the rear main is unmistakable so you do not want to rotate them or crisscross them all right carb cleaner so oops in there blast all these oil galleyways out that's the one look at that come out the oil pump coming out the oil pump this one will come out the cam bearing because it's on the same port. Big one up front. Close that all out. The oil sump. See how it dribbled out of the pump? Coming out of the middle. And then blast out all the things like uh, oil pan holes. They're all good keepers of filth, the thread, thread holes for everything. So you get the idea. Um, blast everything out. Leave nothing, um, make no assumptions. These oil ports here. How about your pressure gauge hole it's on the main oil galley? Threads for your fuel pump. So all that stuff. All right, give her a rinse. <laughs> Loosen all the gunk up, okay? And I want to show you something here. Okay, so these engine blocks are sand cast. And when you go through numerous heat cycles and then a rebuild process and uh, um, hot tanking them, all that kind of stuff, you can loosen up some of those little sand nodules that let's see if I can remain little kind of carbonaceous defects in the sand casting 
and back in these pockets and let boundary sand out into your engine. So uh, that can be disastrous. So I go around and I scrape all those with a screwdriver or something, pick at them, make sure they're still solid and uh, cleaned out. I ran some real good, that sort of thing. So, okay. So I hope that helps. And uh, I'll put down the phone for a while and uh, get, uh, get to scrubbing. Look at the crap just up the shaft that came out. Okay. I work it all around to try to get the sides. Let's see what color of the crap comes out. All right. Look at the look at the dirt that it came out of the front main bearing galley just with that little bit of cleaning. Yep, so that's the process. We'll do that until everything comes out spotless. Say goodbye to the dirt. Say hello to a happy motor. Critical path item. Often ignored. People wonder why their rod's knocking after they just rebuilt the engine. They blame it on the rebuilder. Well, maybe the rebuilder didn't do this step. So, I think this is essential. Too many uh, happenings where uh, a little bit of dirt screwed up what would have been a nice build.
okay after cooking in the sun drying out a little bit she's all dripping with uh, oil to keep it from rusting up and uh, now we're ready for the rebuild okay she's parked ready for building but do not forget blast out the oil galleys and clean up the crank critical path so <laughs> anyway i hope that helps you guys um i'm not a professional uh, engine builder it's just i've done a bunch in my day and i have a pretty good success record so uh I guess I'm 60 years old and I worked as a, an apprentice mechanic for a master uh, mechanic back when I was like 13. He taught me a bunch of stuff and then uh, um, I worked uh, oh, pumping gas and changing tires and stuff full service garage when I was in uh, junior high. And uh, then uh, in high school, me and all my buddies were motorheads, and we were building Cobra Jet blocks and going up in the mountains here four-wheeling and blowing stuff up and rebuilding them on the trail and getting them back down and building them up bigger for the next time. So, uh, yeah, so just take everything with a grain of salt read the books invaluable right here get yourself a copy these are uh, absolutely necessary if you got a world war ii jeep and if you have a world war ii jeep or civilian but both can benefit from using these you can get reprints from uh, Portrayal Press, and uh, they do a great job. And just be aware, do your research. There's a few corrections to the wartime book that are in the civilian book. So it uh, has to do with uh, connecting rod orientation, piston orientation. I'll go into that later. So, well, that's about it. Sunday afternoon. And uh, I had a rough work week. Busted my butt in my new gig. So, I think it's old beer 30. I'm headed home and I'm going to sit under the shade tree. And uh, maybe edit this video a little bit. And uh, get her posted for you guys. So, take care.